Your merciful love, O oh God, we have received in the midst of your temple. You pray your praise, O oh God, like your name reaches to the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today, as we come before our Father in heaven, let us call to mind the times that we have failed and ask God for his divine mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, they made kings in Israel, but not by my authority. They established princes, but without my approval. With their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves to their own destruction. Cast away your calf, O Samaria. My wrath is kindled against them. How long will they be unable to attain innocence in Israel. The work of the artisan, no God at all. Disdain from the flames, such is the calf of Samaria. When they sow the wind, they shall reap the whirlwind. They stalk the stalk of the grain that forms no ear can yield no flower, even if it could. Strangers would swallow it. When Ephraim made many altars to expedite sin, their altars became occasions of sin. Though I write for him my many ordinances, they are considered as a strangers. Though they've offered sacrifice, om excuse me, om omolate flesh and eat it, the Lord is not pleased with them. He shall still remember their guilt and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold and handiwork of men. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have mouths but speak not. They have ears, or excuse me, they have eyes, but see not. They have ears, but hear not. They have noses, but smell not. The house of Israel trusts in the Lord. They have hands, but feel not. They have feet, but walk not. Their makers shall be like them, everyone that trusts in them. The house of Israel trust in the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia, alleluia. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. The crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He dries out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today, we hear in the Old Testament in Hosea, God reeling about false idols. And I think in this time in which we live, we're isolated a bit, the government putting restrictions on travel, on different things. We have to understand that it is an opportunity for us to get rid of our idols. Our idols may be the TV, it may be work, it may be a lot of different things that we have in our life that make life easier. It doesn't define a man in an aspect of what you have. What defines a man is the character of his actions when he is put against it, when he is under pressure. We are all under pressure in these times. We all have a certain amount of anxiety. So it's important to realize that our actions are very important and will be judged as that. When we meet our maker, when we finally pass and we come to the gate of heaven, who is Jesus Christ, our actions will testify. If we are good, if we are a sheep, or if we are a goat, in a sense. If we looked out for ourselves only, or if the benefit of others was in our mind, in our heart, the love of others. So we have to realize that when we're put under pressure, our actions count a great deal. And it's time to remove the idols, the things that take us into sin from our life. It's very important. So what is said in Scripture is very important as well. Jesus, it was about evangelizing and going about to all the towns and village, but even when he did an act of mercy on someone who was bound up, someone who had a spirit of maybe antichrist or a spirit of evil in them that was controlling their actions, it was the elites that pointed at him and said, He is acting from the prince of evil, the prince of demons. That's how he's doing this. In a later scripture or another gospel, he said, a house divided against itself will never conquer, meaning that if it was by the prince of demons that he was acting, that house would be divided against itself. So it doesn't make much sense. But it was from the finger of God which he freed the souls that he did. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to realize in this time the process of change, and change is hard. We may be within our homes and our family, our family unit. To go back to the old things that we used to do is just, in a sense, that nostalgia of the past. We have to continue to figure out new ways to evangelize. If people are stopping our evangelization by trying to stop people from coming to church, we have to get online. 
we have to go out to the streets. We have to wear t-shirts maybe or things that will support the effort of who Christ is in the gospel because it's love that makes this world go around. Not hatred, not isolation, not racism, not communism, not federalism, any of the isms, it doesn't matter. God is in control. And if this is happening, he's allowing it to happen for a reason. But what are we to learn from God in this? And that's the message today. Christ is trying to teach us, right, that without him, the world burns. But with him, we have peace. Father, we come before you in praise and thanksgiving. We thank you for hearing us. For we know you always hear us. Consider these needs and we beg you to answer them. Father, we continue to pray for our church, for our holy fathers, cardinals, bishops, for all priests, deacons, religious. Pray for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life. Let us continue to pray for all seminarians who are studying for the priesthood. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our world. We pray for leaders to stand up for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for them, for a holy boldness in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for a stop of violence in the cities of America and all over the world. Lord, that you would bind this violence with your holy angels. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for you, for your family, your friends, your circle of influence, for those that have asked for your prayers, and especially now the intentions and the silence of your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. And we pray for Robert, parents for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, these are our prayers. We ask you to hear them through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and also through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, our Mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth is given in human hands and made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you, O holy people, he stretched out his hands and endured his passion so to break the bonds of death and to manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, that we may be get gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. Let me lead you in a spiritual communion, if I may. Lord Jesus Christ, from every tabernacle in the world, we ask you to come and flood our hearts, to bring us peace, to bring us love, and bring us your joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ.